All right, we're back. Any new ideas for uh, give me a minute. I'm wrapping up here. Oh, yeah, I had the flashlight. Yeah, that's what I needed. Uh, all right, we're back. And we were looking uh, into the riser. Uh, so we've got this. So we're, the barrel is sitting on a one inch piece of DuraBoard, which is one inch ceramic fiber board. It can handle 2300 degrees, very insulative. We've got a Wonder Board, standard from any hardware store under that, and then pavers under that. So the problem with the DuraBoard, it's amazingly strong for heat, and it's amazingly brittle and not durable at all for any kind of abrasion or cutting. So you see this piece here, I'm gonna just rip it off, you can flake this off, it's just crumbly. Um, it's like fiberglass, but it's ceramic glass. So if you get little pieces in your skin, it's worse than fiberglass. Uh, the blanket's worse than the board. The board uh, doesn't really get you. The blanket's terrible. So the, when you go to clean these things out, the vacuum will just destroy this material over the, however many times you vacuum it out because the holes will drag across the bottom back and forth. And just that dragging action will, will burrow into this material and make a, tr a trench in it and it'll kick up the fibers. So I've put in a sheet metal bottom that you can see all along here is tabbed up, screwed in, and that's basically just as a protector for the DuraBoard for future cleaning. So this system basically to keep it uh, durable over the long haul. And, um, and that translates into, here's a good, so you can see how the uh, hose clamps bolt onto the tabs on the, that are welded onto the back of the box. So it just straps it firmly, but it's not squeezing real hard. It's just firmly strapping it to the back of the box because uh, I could easily crush it. Uh, you know, it's just insulation in there. We've got the Dura board uh, for the inner walls of the riser. And then that, is that dura board is then surrounded by one inch dura blanket and then we've got the metal around that so in the box we also have the dura board on the bottom to protect the heat on the bottom of the box and again the half inch blanket all the way around the exposed metal everywhere in here all the way around and and then of course there's going to be fire brick lining everything in here uh, to protect the firebox and the insulation. Um, so we were talking about this door, this bypass. Uh, so you can really see, uh, there you can really see the hinges, the bracket, and the rod that goes through the barrel out the barrel. It's got a little nice wood stove spring handle, and lift, and then there it opens, and then it shuts. So that bypass, um, when, the, when the system's cold, and if your chimney's cold, basically you need to prime the chimney. You can't, you can't, but the bypass does not work as a primer. You'll still smoke back if you don't run the system properly. As, as any wood stove would do, you know, a modern wood stove would smoke back if you had a cold chimney and you started a huge fire in it and there's a, a cold plug in the chimney, then it would just smoke back into your house. But because we have a big bench and sideways duct run, if the bench is cold, like the first start of the season, or because this is a shop, it might end up, if people aren't in here a lot, it might get cool, uh, lose all its temperature, the mass would release all its heat, then you're doing a cold start again. And during shoulder season, which is really strong here in Montana, you, got, you can have hot days and cold nights. And during that season, you might need a bypass as well. So what it does is you'll still have to prime the chimney with a little bit of paper fire or a tea light candle. Like a, a perfect place would be this clean out cap, which shoots down our whole back pipe run. You could put a tea light candle directly under 
this vertical chimney run and that would slowly get rid of your cold plug. So that's primed your chimney. But then when you start your fire, you still have to run through a long cold mass horizontally, which it's not gonna wanna do because the chimney is not up to operating temperature. So you've removed the cold plug with priming, but priming is not the same as drawing from a hot, from a warm chimney. The draw from a warm chimney is very strong. In fact, when the system's warm and you wanna come in and light it the next day, um, the way the one has worked before and the way this one will work as well, if I ran this yesterday, the system's still up to temperature, uh, you know, the box will be cool to the touch. You'll be able to touch the bricks in here, but the system's warm. The chimney will draw so strong that when you start a little kindling fire in here, it might just pull your paper right in and up the riser. It'll just vacuum it up. And that's the strength of the draw of a proper chimney. So when the system starts, and that's with the door closed and your port wide open, uh, the way the batch box works has so much velocity. So what you'll need to do is this door will get cracked when you're on startup of a warm system. So you'd probably crack it like this, and then that will slow down the velocity. But getting back to the bypass, so with a, with a primed chimney, but not up to operating temperature to have that strong draw, it's really hard to run the system through the bench without smoking back in the amount of time it would take to warm the system up to get it to draw right. You'd have to have tiny, tiny fires for a very long time, and it would be aggravating and take forever. So the bypass, runs the heat straight into the chimney, starts warming that chimney up to temp, and then that chimney starts drawing really hard, and then you can shut your bypass off, and that forces it to go through the bench, and then you're running good. So the, and the bypass, again, we don't have to close off the bench. It won't run or run that way once you open this up. You give it the path of least resistance, and the heat will want to go directly to the chimney, bypassing the bench, and you're off and running. So, and, and it has to be shut fairly well, or, you know, when the system's running, if, if I have this to where it doesn't shut really well, and I have this gap in here, and you see this gap, that would suck in a lot of heat, making the system less efficient and shooting heat we don't want to shoot out the chimney. So, I've got it kind of under spring tension, you push in, got a little latch, that locks that door shut really well. And that'll give us a nice close off when the system's running properly. So uh, where we're at now is getting ready to cob. This is Friday, so we're gonna start cobbing Monday. Um, the, I've got a list, the rest I have to do on mechanicals is install the box bricks and the P-channel. We're going to install the two windows. Uh, we've got to put a slip joint in the chimney so it can be dismantled for easy inspection and cleaning if it ever needs it. We've got to put a door handle on the door. We've got to install the gasket and cure it. Uh, we've got to add clay to the bottom of the riser around the bricks. And then I'm going to use aluminum foil to wrap off uh, my, ri my riser, or sorry, my chimney use aluminum foil around the, the chimney where the bench is gonna be, because I always get covered with mud and get scratched up. I want a nice clean finish when we're done. Also wrap the top of the barrel with aluminum foil, because the cob's gonna come up the barrel, and I'll put a sheet down each side of the box. So I had a great idea of wrapping with saran wrap, but then I realized we're gonna be burning the system and that wouldn't work too well. So uh, we're gonna remove the end loop. So we just have the two bottom sections to cob around until we get up high, and then we'll add the end loop so it's out of our way during the low side. And uh, we'll revisit this Monday morning.